invite you to now just all begin to close your eyes and just become settled into where you are and into your body as we enter into our time together of meditation. Just bringing yourself into the body, into this very present moment that is right here and right now. Yourself, just breathe naturally. There's nowhere else there is to be in this moment. Now I invite you to bring your attention to the center of your head and just begin to breathe into this area. Just imagine with your inner vision a tiny royal blue light that's shining in that area. A tiny royal blue light which is the color vibration of faith. And just visualize this light showing or shining very brightly. As you focus your attention on this royal blue light, notice it growing brighter and brighter and shimmering as it expands to fill your whole body. Just moving from your head into your neck and into your shoulders and down into your torso and your legs and your feet. cell and atom of your being. Just resting and breathing, knowing that divine faith is at work. faith knows exactly what to do and is doing it right now in your body, little by little with your willingness and your attention it will dissolve everything unlike itself prepare to move into our time of silence, I invite you to just imagine your deepest desires and your fondest dreams being infused with this royal blue light of divine faith. Your faith is a laser beaming into the infinite resources of divine substance, drawing your desires and your dreams into form as only divine faith can do. I ask you to hold this vision as we move into our time of silence.
as we bring our awareness back to this time and this space, I invite you to give thanks to your higher being. Give thanks to your higher being for all that it provides. And I also invite you that in the days ahead to pay attention Pay attention to the clues that will guide you to the next right steps in your life. Remaining willing and open to see those steps. And resting in the insurance of faith that you always know exactly what to do and when to do it. And we just breathe in this moment as we give this time of gratitude to this divine faith. And we say, so it is. And namaste. Victory. It's a good, good lesson to have, a heart that forgives. And I commend anybody that can get up here and sing. A lot of people, I think, think that public speaking is one of the most difficult things. I would say that singing in front of people would probably be a lot more difficult. So thanks for that, Victory. All right. So today is the first Sunday of Advent for 2021. There we go. I was like, come on. We've got to have, there's got to be something there. Thank you, Sandra. If I can get the candle to light here. So, you know, admittedly, Advent, it, it's still kind of rel a relatively new concept for me because, I don't know why this has got a little bit of feedback, but, but we didn't, Advent was something that we never really even talked about in the church that I grew up in, so. I'm kind of enjoying it. It's kind of a fun thing, you know. It's kind of a great way to kick off the holiday season. And I even saw um, on the Hallmark Channel, they're playing Christmas movies. And I noticed that they've now titled this, or there's a way to greet that time, that kind of in-between time of Thanksgiving and the holiday season. They were calling it Merry Thanksgiving. So, hey, that's kind of cool. But anyway. But anyway, I'll get off my little soapbox here, and we'll, we'll jump on into Advent. So, uh, you know, y'all know I like to start oftentimes by asking questions. And, of course, you don't have to raise your hand, but you can if you want. And those of you at home can jump up and whatever y'all want because we don't see you. So, anyway. But who in here has ever wanted something? <laughs> Be careful raising your hands. You're giving us confidential information. Or who in here has ever wanted to do something or to be something? but didn't or was maybe even hesitant due to feelings of fear. Again, be careful raising the hands because you might give us confidential information. But I dare say that most of us have, have been there. You know, you wanted something really, really badly maybe and, you know, and that new job that maybe paid considerably less than the one that you had. Or maybe it was that career that somebody told you would be a huge mistake. Or you ignored that calling because, well, you know, it just wasn't what somebody else deemed as the status quo. Probably most of us have been in some kind of situation, even if it wasn't a job. You know, some kind of situation that, that fed into that. But today we're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk a little bit about some tools that you can use the next time you find yourself feeling that way. Because I guarantee if there's breath in your body, you're probably going to feel that way again at some point. So the next question is, is how many of you are familiar with what we call the 12 powers here at Unity? All right, I'm seeing yeah, hands and head nods, so that's good. Okay. And don't worry if you're not, because we're going to be talking about some of them as we move through our Advent season. We're going to tie some of those into our Advent stuff here. So, so those of you who are familiar with our Unity 12 Powers, does anybody know what the backbone of the 12 Powers is? 
I think you'll know when I say it. It's faith. So one thing to think about it is visual, visualize a house being built. You know, before you do anything on that house, before you start to erect the walls or anything, you first have to pour a foundation, right? Now visualize faith as being that foundation. You know, faith lays the foundation of pretty much just about everything else because without it, it's going to make your spiritual path a little more difficult than it has to be. So we have to first lay that foundation of, of faith. And you've got you've to have some faith. Now, one of the good things about faith that I'm going to share today is that it doesn't necessarily require you to have enough to fill Lake Monona. Remember that Jesus once told us that faith, the side of a mustard seed, can move mountains. So I'd imagine faith the size of Lake Monona might be able to shift the entire planet off of its axis, wouldn't you say? Now the first Sunday of Advent is technically hope. But faith coincides with it because faith does what? It gives us hope. You know, hope for something different. You know, for something more. For something that perhaps isn't yet seen with your physical eyes. So let's think about even just Christmas for a moment. You know, things were considerably different last year, weren't they? That first Sunday of Advent, there was nobody sitting in here. It was Pete and Martin and I were sitting here in an empty sanctuary. And we were still in the midst of a very strong pandemic at that time. And there didn't seem to be much end in sight for any of us at that point. You know, there wasn't yet a vaccine, or at least one that was readily available to everyone. You know, we were separated from our families and our friends. You know, remember we held our Christmas service online, not really knowing what, would we, be, what we would be doing in Christmas of 2021. You know, would we be in person? Would we do, be doing a repeat? You know, would we have yet seen those family and friends that we so desperately missed, you know, by that point next year? We just didn't know. You know, and there were times it felt that there was no end in sight, didn't it? You know, like we'd always be buried in that, that pandemic with the way that it was at that time. You know, like there may not really be any way out, that those that we missed might still be off, you know, those visits, those reunions might still be off in a distant future somewhere. But we never lost hope. We never lost faith that some way, somehow we would get through it. And that some way, somehow we would be together again. And here we are. You know? Now our faith may not have changed what was happening right then at that moment. But, you know, during that Christmas of 2020. But... It sure changed the outcome of this one, didn't it? We had that flicker of hope that we refused to let go of at that time. And that flicker, that flicker of hope that one day it would be better. And it became so because faith. Whether it was the size of a mustard seed or a size of a lake, it moved a mountain. Now, 1 Corinthians 16, 13 of the Bible tells us, Keep alert, stand firm in your faith, and be courageous and be strong. Now, Unity Minister and author Reverend Sharon Connors tells us this in her book called Adventures in Resilience, Ignite the Twelve Powers in You to Create a Radiant Life. She says, Without divine faith, hope and optimism would wobble. Again, without divine faith, hope and optimism would wobble. So it's kind of like building that house without first laying that foundation, right? You know, what's going to happen without the foundation? The walls are going to wobble. It's not going to be very strong. It's going to be something like I would probably build. But anyway. <laughs> but those walls are likely going to wobble until either they fall down or we fix them. Now, Reverend Sharon reminds us of the word of Pope John 23, who said, Consult not your fears, but your hopes and dreams. Think not about your frustrations, but about your unfulfilled potential. Concern yourself not with what you tried and failed in, 
but with what is still possible for you to do. So I propose that we do this today on this first Sunday of Advent. I propose that we make an agreement to consult our hopes and our dreams rather than our fears. Seems like it would be so much easier, right? Because that's the thing, you know, about hopes and dreams. You know, they aren't just arbitrarily floating around in your head for no reason. They're there for a reason, right? They aren't randomly just hanging out one day because, you know, they want to watch you try to achieve them and fail, allowing them to ridicule you and to laugh in your face. That's not why they're there. You know, and faith is what it is. It's the backbone of what it is that's going to give you the assurance that you've got what it takes and that you can live this life the way that you want to live it. So does anybody remember the story of Jesus walking on water? That's one of the earliest Sunday school lessons. But does anyone in here remember the moral of that story, of that parable? You know, it wasn't just so... Jesus could, could, you know, wow everybody at the fact that he could walk on water. I mean, that's pretty cool, but that wasn't the moral of the story. You know, it was a story about faith. And then, you know, Peter saw Jesus walking on the water, and at first he freaks out a little bit because he sees what he thinks is a ghost. You know, it's a stormy night, which really starts to set the scene for a nice ghost story. But him thinking that he sees a ghost makes complete sense. You know, the water's turbulent. It's, I think it's supposed to be dark, you know, all this kind of stuff. But then it comes a little closer, and he sees this ghost actually appears to be Jesus. But, you know, he, he's got to have proof. He says, you know, oh, no, you know, i got to prove that it's you, Jesus. If, if that's really you, invite me to come to you. So Jesus tells him, you know, hey, come to me. Now, Peter, you know, he must have been feeling pretty good in his faith at that moment because, you know, sure enough... He steps a toe out there on the water, and before he knows it, he's walking on the water, right there just like Jesus. But then he starts to lay his focus back on the storm that's going on around him, and he becomes afraid. As soon as he does, he starts to sink. And before you know it, Jesus is like, I'm having to walk over there and put a hand down there and help him back up out of the water. And Jesus says to him, and you can find this in Matthew 14, 30, the one of the Bible, but Jesus says, you of little faith, why did you doubt? You know, see, Peter had already proven he could walk on water just like Jesus. But then, then he began to doubt and he sank. You know, he sank because he doubted that he could. After he had already done it. So you may also be sitting here today, you know, doubting your own abilities, the same way that Peter was. You know, and I remember the first time, it's been several years ago, but I ran a half marathon. And I certainly didn't go from being a couch potato to running a half marathon overnight. You know, I had to first decide I was going to do it, then I had to train for it. You know, and I had to get myself back into shape and condition myself, my body, to where it was able to do that. You know, and faith is the same way. You know, we can decide that we're going to do it, but sometimes we might still have to train for it. You know, sometimes we've kind of let our faith go a little bit, kind of put it over to the wayside, but that's okay. You know, it's okay to start from square one as long as we keep our eye on the prize. And we agree that we're going to go from wherever we are right now in this moment to where we want to be. Even if we have to start like Peter when he first sank. And we have to do that to be able to walk on water right there alongside Jesus. So you might have something in mind right here and right now with you today. Something that you're struggling with. You know, maybe it's the belief that you're unable to get off the couch for a healthier body. You know, believe that that new job that you want is just completely out of your reach. That you'll never meet that life partner that you seek to have. You know, only you can know what that is right now in this moment. You know, maybe you're lost on the steps to take for making that leap of faith. So let's talk about those tools that I mentioned earlier. Now, Reverend Sharon Connor tells us in her book, she mentions the first step in your prayer time 
Ask the divine presence in what your next right steps are. Listen carefully and journal what comes to you, then do it. You know, as many of you are likely aware, this is not necessarily going to be delivered in a clear as day audible voice beaming down from the heavens. You know, oh, we wish it could, but it often does not happen that much in your face, you know. Now, I'm going to say that you won't necessarily hear it audibly because some people may. But chances are high that it's going to come in some other way. But I invite you to ask and then pay attention. That's the main thing. Ask and then pay attention knowing that it's going to come to you. Pay attention to what may randomly just pop up for you, you know, in conversations with family and friends, you know, things you see on TV, on social media, things that you hear on the radio, on the phone. Because I'm telling you now that you're likely, when we open ourselves to it, you're likely going to recognize it when you hear it or when you see it. And they aren't going to be just a coincidence. You know, these types of things are actually happening all around us all the time. But the thing is, is that we just seldom pay attention to it. So ask, thank the universe in advance because it's going to come, and then be open. Be open and pay attention. Next, this is a big one. This is one I don't think, you know, some of us do and some of us don't. You know, we just kind of let this go to the wayside, but... Find a prayer partner. Find a prayer partner to help you fan your hopes and to encourage you. And to also be that for someone else. Now our spiritual care team here at the Unity of Madison, you know, each has a prayer partner that's on the team. I talk to other ministers who have prayer partners. Other people, I've gone to Unity churches that have prayer, or other churches with that have prayer partners. You know, I've had some tell me how greatly having a prayer partner enriches your life. And if you've got one, you know that. They greatly enrich your life, you know. And our prayer partners can help us hold it together and can help us hold on to that faith during those times when we feel like we can't. Remember the words, where two or more are gathered. And this is one thing that we practice with a prayer partner. And third, this is a big one, take a small, courageous step each day in the direction of one of your heart's desires. You know, I, I began to notice something about myself at one point, you know. You heard me mention earlier that I, I once ran a half marathon. You know, and I used to be a runner. And as any runner knows, you get this high from running that you just almost don't get from anything else. You know, this energy almost like nothing else can give you. But I eventually had to stop because my knees told me, hello, we've had enough. <laughs> and now they sound like a bowl of Rice Krispies when I squat down. <laughs> but sometimes it is admittedly now difficult for me to get off the couch. There are days I just don't want to get off the couch, I'm going to admit it. You know, I sit down and I just decide, ooh, I'd just rather be here. Oh, the show just came on. Let me do that instead of my workout. Yeah. But to, to help me through that, I joined an accountability group. You know, it's not quite the same as a prayer group necessarily, but this group helps hold me accountable to do my workouts. You know, this group has an app too, which really helps. And on the app, each day I'm given a task to complete. Now, some days the tasks are small, simple tasks, in other days, they're, other days, they're larger, but the common theme is that whatever they are, they have me get up and do something, which then makes me want to do something else. You know, a step toward being more fit, a step towards being more mindful, and even just being more adventurous. So there's just nothing like that sense of accomplishment with that. And this also holds true for your heart's desires. You know, there's nothing more wonderful than taking that first step. Because when you do, you're likely going to find out, hey, you know, that wasn't as scary as I thought it would be. You know, and then you're going to want to take another step. And you'll find that with that step, that you're not as afraid as you were with the first. And on and on and on, it just starts to build on each other. 
And all of those hearts, you'll begin to find that all of those hearts' desires are right there, right in front of you. Close enough for you to just simply reach out, grab, and finally be able to say, you know, there you are. Why in the world was I so afraid? And it starts with one step. Look up some of the most some of those people we consider the most successful in the world, whether it's, you know, they've got this mansion that you want or whether it's the, the spiritual practices that you want. They all started somewhere. So to end today, I ask you, and this is in the words of Reverend Sharon Connor in her book, if you had enough faith, what would you do? If you had a shade more courage, what would you dare? What might you do to develop robust courage at this time in your life? What conversation with yourself and or others do you need to stop having to make room for what is trying to emerge in your life? Isn't it time today? Isn't it time to have more faith? Namaste. And we're not actually doing a book study, but this is the book I'm going to be referring to with Sharon Connors. I put a link to it in our e-blast. And when I let her know, she was quite gracious enough, she's going to send a study guide. So if anybody wants to do their own study with this, I'll make those guides available for everybody. So I just wanted to add.